Hey everyone, it's Kirk here again at Option Alpha. So today we're gonna go through and back test two different types of zero DTE strategies just to see if morning versus afternoon works better for a zero DTE strategy. Now, before I begin, I'm gonna put a link right below this video to these back tests so you can check them out for yourself and then clone them as templates. I'll show you that I'm also running one of these as a live template right now. I just started a couple days ago, so it is actually starting to make some trades, which is really cool but let's go in and start testing these. So first one that we're gonna do here is we're gonna run a back test inside of the zero DT back tester. We're gonna use SPX here and we're gonna do expiration of zero DT. That means that the contracts expire the same day that we get into them. But in this case, we're gonna let the contracts go all the way through expiration, win, lose, or draw, no profit taking, no stop loss, no nothing in this example, just purely testing. Do we get into trades early in the morning or do we get into trades in the later afternoon? So this works good, by the way, if you're a small trader and you can't do pattern day trading, you can also do this too, because you're just gonna let the contracts expire. And so you're not gonna take profits on those contracts early or get out of the position early, just let it expire and settle to cash, which is what it does, SPX. So we're gonna switch this here to an iron condor in this case. We'll do a nice wide iron condor here. We're gonna set the short strikes at 30 delta or closest. So we'll do the short call at 30 delta, the short put at 30 delta. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the long strikes. We're gonna do those $5 apart. So in this case, we're gonna do this one $5 below the short put leg exactly. So we only wanna do a $5 wide spread in SPX. SPX is a big product. So you do $5 wide spread, it kind of keeps the margin um, or the risk contained here. So we're gonna do this one, oops, wrong one. We're gonna do this one $5 above the short call leg exactly. So again, we're gonna do a $5 wide iron condor, but we're setting the short strikes at 30 delta, which should get us out of the money a little bit, but not too far out of the money that the premium's kind of not there. We're gonna leave the capital at $5,000 to start and only do one contract. So essentially every day, if there's a contract available, a position available, we'll do one contract, that's it. That way we just keep everything the same, keep it even. And then so entry time here, we're gonna do about 10.30 in the morning for this test. So we'll do Monday through Fridays, we're gonna skip FOMC days because we don't wanna trade those. And we'll include five cents of slippage on the way in. This is important, we talked about this in a previous video, which I'll link to below here in the description as well. But slippage is really important to test because it can take a profitable strategy and turn it into a losing strategy just purely on slippage. But the important thing here about the time, the entry time at not 10.30 is that you know, I see a lot of people, and this is why we're testing it here, is a lot of people, what they do is they say, well, you gotta get into zero DT trades early in the morning because that's the biggest premium, then let it decay. Whereas other people might say you get into them later in the afternoon when it's closer to the uh, to the end of the trading day and then you let it decay there. But some people say, well, the premium might not be there at the end of the day. So this is what we're gonna test. We're gonna test 9.30 versus, or sorry, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time versus sometime in the afternoon, okay? So in this case, we'll do that. When we flip open our position criteria, we're not gonna do any position criteria here. We're not gonna do any filtering. We can do all of this later when we test more variations. And then for exit options, we're not gonna do any exit options here. The only thing we're gonna do is force slippage of five cents on any closing trades. So we're gonna force slippage here in case you might wanna close trades near expiration for some reason, but uh, but we're not gonna do any profit taking, no stop loss, no touch expiry or touch closing. So the stock moves and kind of touches one of the strikes or one of the legs, we're not gonna do that. And then we're gonna do all three years here for this. So we'll go back as far as we can for SPX and see what the results are. So once we hit this, we just hit run. We can view the results here. The back test will start running. Once it runs, then these results will show up. All right, so the test finished running here. And as you can see, this one was not a profitable strategy to run if you just straight up ran an SPX iron condor again at a 30 delta getting into the position around 10.30 in the morning. So again, we did this one testing just purely entering the position at 10.30 in the morning. There's lots of variations that we can test, but again, we're just gonna try morning entry versus an afternoon entry. Does that get us enough to that, that we could then start to test more variations or maybe even trade a strategy? But if we go through some of these stats here and you can see, I mean, even visually the P&L curve, you know, it doesn't look too promising. You went through a pretty good drawdown initially. Then you kind of got through the first year and you were profitable, but it really was very choppy all the way through and just kind of ultimately ended up being a losing strategy at the end of the day. It probably, you know, like maybe at the end of this year, maybe it turns back around, maybe it's a small winner, 
but really it doesn't look like the metrics look really good. So kind of going through this now, you can see, obviously we see the total P&L here. We see the profit factor. This is a big one that I look at personally because I look at profit factor and I mentioned this before, but this is really looking at and then kind of answering the question the way I think about it as if I put a dollar in, do I get more than a dollar back out of the strategy? In this case, if you put a dollar in, you're getting 98 cents. So you're kind of eroding away a small clip. It's like two cents per dollar that you put in. It's probably not where you want to be. Win rate, about 48%. That maybe is about what we expect for a 30 delta type position. You can see the max loss was taken 45% of the time. Max profit was taken 43% of the time. The in-between there was partial profits, partial losses here. You had some trades that were filtered out for Fed and probably pricing in here. If you look at the average P&L, and this is what we had talked about before, is like the average P&L here is about $3, negative $3. So it doesn't probably feel like if you trade this strategy, like if you're in the actual trenches trading the strategy day by day, you probably don't feel that you're actually losing money. You probably don't feel like you're actually gaining a lot of money. It just probably feels like you're eroding away at a strategy kind of slowly. And that maybe is the worst for traders just to kind of erode away at it. Premium on this strategy was about $254 and the risk was about $246. So like reward to risk wise, you were definitely collecting more money that you could lose, but your win rate didn't kind of cover that. So you really didn't actually end up doing pretty well here. So if we open up the monthly P&L for this strategy, I mean, obviously, like I said, you could see time periods where you went through, you know, long stretches of losing money and then you made some money and then you went through stretches of losing money. Again, it probably wasn't really consistent across the board um, and certainly something you could investigate a little bit more if you wanted to. All right, so let's go up here and now let's add a comparison. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to add a variation. So we're going to take the same exact strategy. We're going to add a variation here, which pulls up all of the same information. It's zero DT, it's SPX, the same iron condor setup, the same capital. The only thing we're going to change here is we're going to change the time. And this time we're going to change this to, let's say, 2.30 in the afternoon. So rather than getting into the strategy one hour before the market, one hour after the market opens, let's get into it later in the day. We'll probably have some lower premium. We probably won't collect as much money in premium, but getting into the strategy maybe later in the day kind of recenters the iron condor around whatever happened during the day and maybe gets us to take advantage of time decay a little bit more. So we're gonna do the exact same setup all the way across the board, same slippage, everything. The only thing we changed here is we changed the time until, or the time that we get into the trade. Again, getting into this trade around 2.30 in the afternoon. So we'll let that strategy run and we'll see when it finishes up here, we can look at the results. Okay, so the results are in for that one and the difference is pretty big. So you can see here, I mean, it's almost a $15,000 difference in the P&L, but the curve of these two different strategies is dramatically different. I mean, you can see this strategy's curve getting into it in the afternoon around 2.30, like up and to the right. It's not hockey stick up and to the right, which is kind of good. You don't want to see that where it has like a big hockey stick, but it seems like very consistent across the board. Again, you contrast this with the curve of the strategy that we tested earlier, which in this case is test number A, which is just slightly below zero. And it seemed like you're treading water to kind of slowly eroding the position. So the cool thing here is if you go through and you look at the variations, you can see the differences kind of side by side, which is what I always like to look at. The first one I look at here is again, profit factor. That's just one of my personal favorites. But this strategy number A we talked about before, you got into a trade, you put a dollar into the system, you get 98 cents out here, you put a dollar in, you get a dollar 20 back. Now you're not killing it by any stretch, but like that's a good high profit factor, plus one profit factor, super good. And the win rate here was significantly better as well. So you probably felt like even trading this, you were kind of getting ahead overall because you were making more money than you were losing and you were definitely winning at a higher clip anyway. You did see in this case, I think um, some lower premiums across the board. So yeah, so if you look down here at the risk, the average risk for trade strategy or strategy number A, which is 1030, it's about 246. That's again, because that premium was a little bit higher at 254. Here, you were collecting less money. It was later in the day. But that difference is not too bad. So the difference between say the morning and the afternoon was probably about $25 or so, maybe on average. So that meant that, you know, you kind of forewent an extra $25 of premium just waiting till the afternoon, but it was definitely worth it because if you could get into that afternoon trade, 
you're closer to the end of the day, you don't risk your capital as long in the trading day, you saw a higher win rate across the board. So um, it was definitely worth it doing. It's also worth or very interesting to note the, the max drawdown and the max risk in these two strategies. So the max drawdown is the max peak to trough drawdown that it ever uh, like saw. The max risk is the amount of capital from your initial capital at one point that you ever risked. So in this case, the max risk on strategy number A was about $3,000. That means if you started with five, at some point you risked up to $3,100. And the max drawdown peak to trough at some point, probably something like this, right? Between these two periods here, probably I would assume is about $4,600. This one had much better max risk. So at any point you risked about $1,500 and your max drawdown at any point was about $2,500. Again, it means that you're not seeing these huge fluctuations in your P&L, which is good. Again, you can visually see this just on the chart. You don't see the chart even for strategy number B go like this, right? Where at the end of the day, it ends up profitable, but it's like, look, nobody could have better ever live through those trading experiences, right? If I see a chart like this, even if it's profitable, I, pr I know I'm not gonna live through those experiences because the max drawdown and the max risk are gonna be all over the place, right? And probably the win rate's not gonna be great either. So I want something that's a little bit more consistent, which is why I like this 231 a little bit better. Interesting to note, and I will like try to zoom in on this. I can't zoom in on this, but I guess I highlight this for you guys here. But I think it's always fascinating when you get to this stage where you find something like this and generally the metrics work, you will inevitably find somebody who will go through a strategy, whether it's this strategy or any strategy, and they'll start trading it. And after a couple months, maybe even after you know 50 to 60 trades, they will determine the winners and losers. And so if you look at this one, and we'll just stop here, like June 24th, 2022. So assuming you started at the beginning of uh, 2022 straight trading this strategy. And then you got to June of 2022. Test number B was in the hole by $1,200. Now at that point, you had about six months worth of trading, right? So you probably had a good trade count, not an insanely high trade count. But at that point, test number A was the winner and test number B was the loser if you just cut it off at that point. And the problem with doing that is that if you do, if you look at strategies with such a short timeline, and such like minimal data, it's hard to then extrapolate what's gonna happen from a small subset. And this is why I like back testing these when you have the ability to do it, because then you can really test your ideas and see, okay, I know the future is not gonna be exactly like the back test, and I'm not suggesting it is, but like which strategy just broad-based has better metrics when you get to 200, 300, 500, 600 trades, and that's what we want. So if you cut off early and you looked at it in June after six months, a lot of people would say test number B sucks and test number A is the way to go, but it's not really the case. It's, you know, like kind of after that point, it kind of really turned the corner. So the lesson of the day here for that is don't look at things after two days, three days, a month, two months, like get into good strategies and then let them play out over time, which is what you want to do. So if you like test number B, which is what I did like, I knew that this was going to happen because I tested it a little bit earlier. Metrics are about the same even from a couple days ago. Then what you can do here is you can simply go here to this particular bot, so test number B, and you can go here and you can create a bot. So if I just click that button to create a bot, I can name my bot, connect it to a live trading account like my TradeStation account, and then I can set up my entry time and scan of the day. Now it's set up by default to trade one time per day or scan one time per day at 2.30 because that's exactly how the back test is set up enter a position at 2.30. Usually what I do is I go in here and I give it a little bit of a range around 2.30. So I'll go in here and I'll say, okay, let's say 2.20 to about 2.40 in the afternoon. So not a wide range. I'm not giving it hours and hours of time, but I'm not going to do one scan at 2.30. I maybe want to let it scan for every minute between the next you know, 20 minutes or so, just to try and find an opportunity to get into a position. And what's cool about using trading with the slippage is that the slippage is already baked into pricing here. So you'll just wanna confirm this, but for opening positions, you'll allow 100% of bid-ask spread and then 5% of slippage. Closing trades, 100% and 5% of slippage. In this case, we don't have any closing trades set up, but it just by default includes that if you start to introduce something like exit options or profit taking, which you could of course test in here. So. The fun thing for me is that I actually have been running this strategy. So I converted this strategy over 
last week when I saw these back tests, and I'll again add a link to those back tests so you guys can check a look at them yourselves. But I have been running this strategy live. It's in my live TradeStation account because I like trading it there for SPX because there's no commissions for us here at Option Alpha for doing that, no assignment fees. So in this case, it's been running. It only has a couple trades. It's only closed five trades here. So obviously not huge for uh, trade count. But what's cool about this is if you look inside the log here, it's doing exactly what I want. It's going through the opportunities every day. I'd use about 2.20 to 2.40 in the afternoon, and it's trying to find positions. In this case, yesterday I found a position. This one went all the way to expiration. Again, I have no profit taking, no stop loss, no nothing. It went all the way to expiration here and closed for a full win. So that's good. It doesn't happen all the time that way. So I've had some winners, losers already as we start trading here. I know that's the expected outcome because if I look at the win rate here, I know it's just over 50-50, so, but that's with a high trade count. That's with almost 700 trades. So after a couple trades, I know I'm not going to get perfectly, you know, perfect metrics all the way, but it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is it's entering positions, looking for positions to get into, selling some premium. Sometimes it takes partial profits, full losses, full profits, et cetera. Um, but again, it's a strategy that I will continue to run moving forward because I like the metrics for it. I like the ultimate result of the back test. I think it's a good strategy. It's an easy one to automate. You just get into the position, let it expire, let the PL take care of itself over time. So I hope you guys found this video very helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments. Again, share this video, give us a thumbs up or like on YouTube, wherever you're watching this video. It really, really helps out getting this video into the hands of other traders who are like you. Again, you can get all the links for different resources right below this video. If you have any questions at all, let me know. And until next time, happy trading.